Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the F- Happy Even After podcast. I'm your host, Renee Bauer, and I am super excited to introduce today's guest. So let me get right to it. Anna De La Rosa is a motivational speaker, business owner of De, De La Rosa Insurance Services. She's a success coach and a meditation guru. She founded the Meditation and Mindfulness Project as seen in Mantra Magazine. She's a champion and cheerleader for all women, and she has several wildly popular Instagram accounts and a blog dedicated to lifting women up. And she has her own book of inspirational women coming out in 2021, which I'm super excited about. And she has just gone through her own divorce. In fact, um, it finalized a few months ago. But her journey, like so many others, started off difficult, and really her story starts in 2011 when she had a major upset that really just rocked her world. Anna is a beautiful soul with a huge heart, and I am so honored to share this space with her. So welcome, girl. Oh, thank you, and what an amazing intro. A mouthful, right? Uh, Well, I I stalked Uh, you a little bit to put it together, I'll be honest. (laughs) Hey, and you know, it's funny. Hey, I love stalking people too. I've been stalking you for months. How about that? (laughs) I'm really a jack of all. (laughs) I'm a jack of all trades. And that's how we get to know each other by stalking each other before. Absolutely. So I want to jump in today and want you to start by sharing your story. And it's the one that really jumped out at me and why I thought that you were such a great guest for my podcast. And it doesn't have anything to do with divorce, but it's a story of of rising up and a story of adversity and a story of pain and turning something positive from that. So I'm going to let you take it away, but in 2011, something happened and it changed your life. Can you share with my audience what that was? Yes, my um, brother committed suicide and, you know, I literally was not even, you know, I think that I was not expecting that and I don't think anybody is. But when it happened, I knew right in the pit of my stomach that I needed to make a change in my life. And I needed to start speaking and quit living for others, basically. And that is what did it. That right there made me think about, you know, I've been living my career. I've been living my path in my whole entire life from that point on uh, for other people. And I literally quit my six figure job or career or whatever you want to say. And that next month I started my own insurance firm and that was Delarosa Insurance Services. And because that right there was my start of um, what do they say? Every, anything that you start, like as far as your business is concerned, it's a journey of self-discovery and that is where it started. Hmm. And you know how that is, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And why, why was it that that was the trigger point? What prevented you from starting your own business before that? Because I'm sure you had the thoughts that you wanted to do that, but you just didn't go ahead and, and actually take that leap. The tragedy behind all of it and the shock because, you know, most people don't realize that when something happens in your life so tragic, it shoots something into the subconscious mind and you actually change um, your, you in an instant, some block or something that had been held captive. And I didn't know really at that time, you know, I just didn't. I wanted to start, but then, you know, you get busy or you're used to the grind or you um, don't think you're good enough or you just don't really know how to do it. And that is what was the trigger and the starting um, point of that. And I literally knew that because his life was so short that I did not want to go the rest of my life living for other people and being told what to do, even though I was running the show at the position that I was in. It still wasn't mine. Mm. You know, I was still under someone else's thumb and I could never even like 
yeah, I was running the show, but if I had an idea that I thought was good for the business or whatever, I could never implement it because I still wasn't the one that was the head decision maker. And so I really wanted to be in a position where I could run the entire show. And with me going through the grieving process, I turned it into my creativity and that's really how I healed. That's amazing. And what I love about you doing that and but you also do something else and so like that's where i feel like we always have to be just one thing you know it's the the one role and i love when when especially women say listen i don't need to be the one thing i can be the business owner and the entrepreneur but i can also be a business coach and i can also be a meditation guru and i can do all of these other things that excite me and that i'm passionate about so talk a little bit about that piece of your life because i know it's a big one it is and you know once i started my business and i started going through the um, the grind of building and, um, what I could, you know, I could get through. I started working so much that I was forgetting about me. Mm -hmm. And, um, I literally didn't even think about myself. I was building a empire and I literally was making sure that, I was catering to all of the employees of the companies that I represented it for, you know, medical, dental, and vision insurance. And I am the only one that was in the area that had a full service, you know, business that could cater because normally it's either an agency. It's not really a one woman show. It's a one man show, but I just wanted to like prove to myself that I could do it. But yet I was working all times of the night and I, my every softball or every type of tournament we went to for years, everybody knew that I was either enrolling people or I was on the phone or I was busy, you know, going, doing applications or something. I was always working, even though I was there. But once I got into five years into it, I realized that you know, I think it was 2015 or something, something happened to where I wanted to see what else I could do. I started, you know, looking on the online space and I really didn't know where to start. And I um, remember I found Kundalini yoga and I never did yoga, but I wanted to see what it was. And, um, you know, I'm a spiritual person and I have always had that where energy. I could feel it when I walk in the room or whatever. I already know what people were thinking. I really just didn't even know what it was. I was just thought I was in tune because I'm always, you know, busy and stuff like that. But I really had to stop and take it. Like once I started doing the Kundalini Yoga about 2014 or 2015, I started realizing that I wasn't putting myself first and I had lost myself all these years. And once I started that, that's where it started turning around. Like I knew that I wanted to do other things. So I started incorporating that. And then I started interviewing ladies. And I remember doing my first um, summit. It was called The Art of Manifesting Money. And I had no clue what I was doing. But I started a coaching class. I didn't do it personally. Like, I wasn't mine. I started with a coach and um, in a group. And, you know, I use tools online for people. I didn't know how to do, you know, all the stuff that you have to do to do online things. I did fiverr.com and, you know, all these mm-hmm. little places that would do this, that, and the other. And so I just started from there. And that's where I realized that I love interviewing. And, you know, so it's, it opened up doors that I had no clue that I had. And I didn't realize how much I loved um, the interview process. And then from there, I was like, I don't want to just interview like, um, people in the yoga community, our spiritual community. I want to interview all kinds of people. And, you know, and that's whenever my husband and I separated in 2016 and I started in, um, 2017, my empowerment women, uh, blog. And I started interviewing, uh, that's when I did the meditation and mindfulness um, project. And then, like I said, I'm divorced now as of a couple of months ago, but you never know what is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Until you start on the journey. And if you don't just start. 
And I think that's okay. I think that's the problem is why people don't start is because I think it's human nature that you want to know. You want to know where you're going to end up. And if you don't, that's when people are like, well, I can't do this because I I don't know what's going to happen. And not knowing is okay. That's right. right. And one thing that I've always done is I keep all of my hopes and dreams and desires to myself. And I, you know, journal a lot, but sometimes I'm not able, you know, to get to the pen and paper. You know how that is. So I'm always writing notes in my phone. And I'm so, it's, it's like a sacred space for me because I don't want to talk about what I'm going through initially when it starts because it's a growing process and I don't want anyone to shoot me down because mm. I had that for so many years. So once I start getting it going and then I start, you know, talking about it and, you know, and, but I just, I'm all, I'm, I really love the fact that I didn't know what was going on and, you know, yeah, it was a tragedy years ago, but that right there pushed me into some other dimension and I'm totally out of my comfort zone and I wing everything. And that's why I'm so excited about everything that I do and kind of a jack of all trades because, you know, nobody would know that I do all this empowerment, you know, online and I'm growing my, you know, platforms, but yet I have the insurance firm that I've been growing forever, but you know, I'm going to shut the doors because that was my old life and it no longer serves me. But my dad and I, or my brothers get on our zero turns and I mow their property on the weekends if they need help. You know, I just, (laughs) everything. I'm I just love it. That that's amazing. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> so you talk about unlocking your tools to discover your divine purpose. What is a divine purpose and how does one figure out what theirs is? Well, they first have to get quiet and actually get the chaotic world out if it's sitting in you know, their room or driving in the car or, um, but you just, it's a yes. It's that yes inside, you know, it's that still small voice that knows what you need to be doing forever and you never do it. And it's flow and ease and it just feels good. And I think that if more people get in tune with themselves and quit catering to others and actually stop for self care, and whatever that is for you, they're able to get to know what their divine purpose is. Because yeah, I mean, everybody has one and there it's never too late. It's never too early. I mean, it's just, you have to get quiet with yourself and get that on the journey of self-discovery, you know? What is your divine purpose? Empowering everybody under the sun. <laughs> I love it. I love... I love um, impacting the world. I love talking, of course. Everybody laughs because I'm always talking about something and telling stories. But I just love to see people living their authentic life and not being fake. I mean, like, I've dealt with that my whole life, you know, because my appearance, um, you know, when you're when you're little and you see people and they just, they're fake. I mean, you can just see. And people feel you energy. People feel everything about that. And I just love being the authenticity and being real and saying what you um, feel, you know, to a point, but you know, I just, I just love people to be real and don't sugarcoat it. And and don't you find that when you are real, you're attracting more of those authentic people who are the the same, they're a compliment to you and sort of (laughs) getting rid of all of the excess that don't have a place or they're kind of toxic. Hey, and that's the, that right there is the key because when you're authentic and real, either the people that you've had in your life are not going to like it anymore and they're going to leave or they're going to fight you in the beginning and then they're going to conform or they're going to totally love it. And, and that's the thing you want to be that mirror and people don't, people don't know about that. And it's amazing. Like years ago, I didn't know we have so many tools now 
that, I mean, you want to have only the people in your life that compliment you and that lift you up. And, you know, you don't, you don't want that toxic energy or relationship that's sometimes happen and you don't realize it, that you do attract it when you're not authentic. And it's okay. It's, it's totally okay to to dump the the people who aren't that for you. And it's okay, yeah. you know. And I think we see like on social media, you're you're building a platform. I'm doing the same thing. And there's so uh-huh. much like metrics of like followers and unfollowers and all of that. And I always feel like unfollowing is sort of a gift because those weren't my people anyway. And so you That's want right. to like gather close the people who are really. Mm-hmm talking your same language. Yeah. And I think that too, because, you know, I never take anything to heart when people follow or unfollow me. That's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? And with us building a platform, I never look at anybody else. I'm never out. And I, I'll look at yours because I love what you're doing and I will go in and I will, um, like and comment on my followers stuff and I embrace them. And that is one thing that I love about social media. Instagram is my baby. I love all of my pages and that's how I have so many, but I literally have a connection with people that are on there. And if for some reason someone gets on there, I've had like two people get on my Instagram page and like dog me in my whole five years that I've had them or a couple of years. But you know what? I don't accept that. And if people want to do that, they will be unfollowed or blocked or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I make sure to be personable and I make sure that I set intentions. You know, this is the way you want the page. If you want to comment and say something negative or whatever, then don't look at it. (laughs) I mean, it's just like, get off, buddy. But yeah, but yeah, it's the beauty behind it. It's your page. It's your platform. So you also speak uh, about um, on your website, which again, I scoured and looked at, <laughs> but you talk, you talk about hidden blocks and how those can sort of sabotage your dream. So how do, so do we even identify what, what, what those hidden blocks are? Your self-talk. Say you are always dogging yourself. I'm fat or whatever, you know, that right there. Um, like if you should have done this or do that or whatever, you're having worse issues. I mean, like your self talk and how you speak is the main one. And once you start recognizing that, then you can start the positive self talk and kind of weaning in or weaning off what you don't want. You know, I mean, that's the number one thing that I do. Isn't that sad that that's like, we don't talk to other people that way. We would never look to our friend and be like, girl, like that outfit looks horrible on you. Like we don't do that. So why Mm -hmm. are we doing it to ourselves? Because we want to be perfect and have perfection. And we want to look like we have it together. You know, everybody. (laughs) we don't. (laughs) I know everybody wants to look like they have their shit together. Yeah. I mean, that's it. And that's, I think that it's easier for us to beat up on ourselves and make sure, but then we don't realize that actually we're being negative and adding that negativity in our lives and it, we attract it. Right. You know, and I think that if we, if we, we forgive and we have love in our heart and we just make sure that, you know, our inner self is lifted, then all of that's going to come to us. And we're going to want to have, we have the life that we want or, you know, are shooting for. And that takes practice. It's the habit. Oh I know. It's, like, it's taken me years. Yeah. I mean, like, I started losing weight after I had Hannah, but I'm on my 11th year and I haven't had any carbs or like, you know, um, fried food or whatever. But every year since then, I've taken something away. And, you know, like two years ago, I took sugar away and that was like the hardest thing. And you don't realize it just like that addiction, the sugar addiction or whatever is the same way about self-talk, you know, you have to practice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you stumble and fall, that doesn't mean you quit altogether. You just get up and keep going. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the main thing is don't beat up on yourself. That was hard. You know, all those years that you don't really know how it is. And then you start pinpointing different places in the life that you need to start. Um, you know, maybe I need to start here or there. 
I have fallen so many times, but I get up yeah. and I start over if I need to, which I am. I love that. So See? let's talk about your book because yes. I am excited about it. Where did you, um, where did you come up with the inspiration and just share a little bit about what this project is and what it means to you? Yeah. Well, um, when I started my meditation and mindfulness project, I had so many amazing women that I was interviewing and I was like, I don't want it just to be a one, you know, genre. I want it to be like all the women out there that I love and they inspire me. And I literally wanted it to be a piece of art where people could have a coffee um, table book where it was, you know, volumes of women that have presented their story because that's a piece of art. You know, I mean, in there, I haven't ever seen anything like it. And I just started writing and interviewing. And then um, I just wanted to turn my blog and the people that I had on it into that piece of artwork because that's what it, it you know, in the beginning, I started writing it, but now it started writing it itself, you know? And so it just, it, it, it's an excitement and it's for, you know, somebody that thinks that, they're too far in their junk or if they just need a little bit of inspiration, they can pull it out. And the beauty that radiates off these women, you know, you can feel it. And that's what I wanted. And so I started and I wanted it to be published sooner, but with me going through a divorce, I didn't want my junk to be on in it. I wanted to be, I've spent three or four years now with, doing self-healing and still building and uh, still showing up as much as I could. And, you know, not trying to not being afraid of, you know, showing certain parts of me, but yet I was still going through self-worth issues and not wanting to be visible. And people were looking at me like, what you are building something. And it's so amazing, but I didn't want to be seen out in the limelight or I didn't want people to see me. And that's why I never would do a live or, I would never do, you know, certain things out there because I just was hiding behind my brands and I didn't, you know, so then COVID set in and, you know, so a lot of things have changed, but now that I'm a divorced and now we're, you know, moving into the next sector, you know, that's when, that's why we pushed it to 2021 and I'm glad to have you. I know. I'm so excited for that. So how many women do you have in it? Well, I have 150 and I have, um, some ladies have decided to stay and then some had decided just to be on the blog or they're now in parts of their lives that aren't, they're not wanting to be out in the limelight. Um, some have, I can't say that one has stayed the same. All the ladies have evolved so much and our lives have changed so much that we've had to start redoing a lot of the interviews and stuff but yeah I have about 150 of them that's amazing uh how is it being published and where when can we expect to see it and how yeah. and all of the good details when can yeah. it be on my coffee table I know and that's the thing I um it's um self-published by a um publisher in um New York also and then um but it's going to start rolling out the summer of 2021. And um, I have some there. It's not just in the United States. I have someone in all countries and that's the beautiful part about it. I want to impact and have someone, you know, being able to read it in another you know, country or another part of the world. And it's going to be translated in seven different languages. So wow. that's awesome too. That yeah. is amazing. And I, it's, oh my God, like you just gave me the chills because the project is so meaningful to have, to gather 
a bunch of women and say like, wow, like these are all amazing humans and they're doing amazing things and they're on a journey for discovery and it's evolving and they're reinventing themselves. Like, I think that that is awesome. And I think that that's just so inspiring and I'm just so excited to see it. So thank, thank you. you for putting that out in the world because I think oh, that- Oh, thank you so much. I, I think love that, it. No, that's, go ahead. I would say, I think that women need, need that. They need to be inspired and, and, and have cheerleaders you know, and I think That's, often that we don't have that. Yeah, because I would have never been ever, like when I started, I didn't have any followers. I didn't have anybody, but I had um, a dream and I had, um, I have a voice and I just started reaching out to women and connecting. And, and if it wasn't for the ones that took me in under their wing. Yeah. And, and, and it doesn't and, matter, you know, who you are. Yeah. And Anna, what I love about what you're saying is, you know, you're right on, you can scroll through anyone's social media page and it looks so perfectly curated, but you're saying, and anyone else will say the same thing. Like there's a grind, there's a hustle, there's a discovery process, and there's that work that's, that happens on the back end and everyone goes through that. So no one is living this, this perfect life. It's just, it's a journey. And I think the more that we share that message, the better every, the other women who, um, who feel like maybe they're in a bad place can kind of get yeah. some inspiration from that and understand that there really is a light at the end of the time. And that's it right there. That is a hundred percent accurate. And you, you, are never too late or you think, Oh my God, I need to be doing this and this and this, but you know what? You're right where you need to be. I mean, that's just the bottom line. If it's delayed two or three years and that's what it's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. If everything comes and it's automatically, you know, smooth sailing. And then, you know, that's the way it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But with you keep, you know, keep going with your enthusiasm and you just keep chipping away each day and doing something. I mean, that's just the bottom line, not and giving up. So you and I are about the same age. And I think a lot of the listeners on this podcast are about that same age too. And I think that that message is so important that it's never too late. It's never too mm -hmm. late to quit the job and start your business. It's never too late mm -hmm. to leave a marriage that isn't loving anymore. It's never too, too late to do, to really do anything. Like you can start today, start now yeah. because you should be happy. You, you are allowed to want to be happy. That's right. That's totally correct. And, um, you know, believe it or not, my, um, on all of my platforms, my, age group is 24 to 70. Wow. No matter what, I'm an analytic fanatic and I totally love tracking all of it. But then I have a spot where I have a cup 50% men mm -hmm. because they want to know and they still, I get more, I mean, you know, mine's not like all women. I get m a lot of audience for men too because they want their women and the people that they're with empowered. And that's important too. Amazing. So yeah, it's just, it's never too late. Yeah. You know, I heard a story a while back that a man was 90 and he started over and wanted to be a painter and became a professional painter and was selling at art galleries at 90. Wow. I mean, what the heck? That is amazing. That is it's amazing. Never Never I too late. It. And hey, my grandmother lived till she was 96 and outlived two husbands and two boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> okay. So how do we find you and follow you and all of that? Of course, all of these links are going to be in the show notes, but if someone's <laughs> listening out there and is like, I love her, I want to work with her, like how do they connect with you? Yeah, AnnaDelarosa.com. Um, I have a little thing on there where they can go in and do like for, they get free seven free, um, of the meditation and mindfulness, um, interviews. If they just sign up like onto the, um, enter the email list and, um, or they can book a free discovery call, which is like 30 minutes. And we just like, we do just chit and chat and, 
get to know each other and see if we would work good together or I just give them a guideline and then if they want to start now or later, you know, it's just totally up to them. Or I'm always on Instagram. I have my personal, uh, the Anna De La Rosa or um, my empowerment is um, empower women quotes. And then my woo woo one is at manifesting junkie. And then chance, of course, I always have to, he's my man. He's my boxer and he'll be seven <laughs> in March, but he's been my, the person, you know, he's been my go-to and my cheerleader the whole time. And he's at chance, the boxer.com. I love it. I mean, not at chance, the boxer Instagram. Sorry. Um, I love the empowering quotes one because some of them are just like really funny. Some of your posts, I'm like, hell yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. And I just didn't like the words just didn't come out of my mouth. So and it's, you know, it's so funny. I do them on the whim every day, every day. I just show up. That's what I'm feeling that day or I'm going through or it inspires me or hits me. And I, that's how I do every single one of my pages. I never have anything planned. I know a lot of people teach that in their courses, but I don't. <laughs> I'm just, I flow and I literally do my quotes as that day because I know that, hey, that's how I'm feeling and I want people to feel it. So I am so grateful to spend this time with you. I cannot wait for your book to come out because I think that that's going to be like the Christmas gift next year. Like everyone's getting a copy of one. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing. Like, everybody will be out there. We'll have launch parties and stuff like that, but it's just everybody coming together and supporting each other yeah. because that's really what it's all about. You know that. Love it. Thank you so much, Love girl. It. I cannot wait to see what you're doing at 90. <laughs> There's some time oh for that. God. I know me too. I can't wait to see what you're doing. Love. <laughs> that's going to be great. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you.